Hello and welcome everyone to episode 108 of One Piece at a Time, the One Piece read-through podcast where we read and discuss five chapters of the One Piece manga each and every week. I'm your host, Derek Bittner, and I'm joined by my wonderful co-host and freelance letterer at Shonen Jump, Brandon Bovia. How you doing, Brandon? I'm doing pretty good. I'm, of course, uh, Brandon Bovia, letterer of manga like Dragon Ball Super and uh, Kaiju Number 8. And uh, not not to dwell on this too long, but uh, we had a new chapter of Super come out yesterday, uh, which is... We're kind of continuing the post superhero uh, follow up. I, I don't know how much I want to say about it because spoilers are. I mean, it's, 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 you really spoil it, you know. But... <laughs> it's not like a big thing, like how the one arc ended a year ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, Goku and Gohan get some sparring time in with uh, with Ultra Instinct and uh, Beast, which is really cool. Uh, mm. I was I was really excited to for people to see that because when i got that in i was like oh they're doing it <laughs> <laughs> it's time finally yeah uh I, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with this next arc yeah it's i wonder because the the new this chapter had it was it had a very kind of chill vibe to it like because there's no stakes you know it's just like hey the movie ended and then gohan or goku show rolls off and he's just like what was that? Like, Gohan, come with me. And then <laughs> they're like, we're going to spar. <laughs> I hear you got a new form. We, we got to do this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm looking forward to checking that out a bit later, but I need to hear about that. So it's you know, no, yeah. no big deal. I feel like it's hard to spoil Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Either way, it's a big moment for us. This is the official end of Thriller Bark. We did it. We survived. <laughs> <laughs> we survived and... It was so arduous. Yeah. Oh, man. So hard. Honestly, I, th- I think we came through this with a new appreciation for it. And this is all... This is sort of the what you'd expect after most arcs. That It's the party time and to- yeah. toss in backstory. More backstory, I guess, is the way to put it. There's a lot to chew on with this one. So let's, let's not waste any time. Jump into it with chapter 486 piano and while we don't have the next the start of our next i guess uh, cover uh, story story cover story we do have a where are they now where hey yokozuna is no longer challenging the sea train he's he's in good shape yeah. Every, it's happy that's that's good yeah everyone's living a happy life i like i like this you can see in chimney and kokoro and uh what was the rabbit's name? I don't remember. Oh, I, I have no idea. Eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of weird to see Thriller bark during the day. Yeah, it looks... And you're seeing it in the aftermath, just like all of the debris. I mean, God, because, you know, Kuma basically blew it the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not in great shape. But yeah. they have a smaller ship that's... Uh, I, I don't I, I couldn't tell you how small it is in the grand scheme of things, but uh, they escaped. Uh, well, by I say they Absalom and Hogback escaped. They used Absalom's power to cloak their ship, a smaller ship to get away. And it turns out they even bothered to rescue Moria. Yeah, which, hey, you know, they they didn't leave him behind, which I was kind of that's what I would have assumed. So I was surprised. I was like, OK, yeah, yeah, they're, they're getting out of Dodge. You know, they. It seemed like they had, you know, swore no fealty to to Moria, but they decided to take him along anyway. I imagine Hogback might have done it just because it allows him to continue his research and oh, make that's more true. zombies. So yeah. that'd be my assumption. I don't know. He's also properly bandaged up this time because the last time he showed up, he didn't seem all that banged up. But I guess he got yeah. Some... I was gonna say he got crushed by oars, but he's fine. You know, whatever. <laughs> now he's now he's properly bandaged up and can see where they're at and. The interesting thing here is Hogback and them, uh, Absalom talk about why Kuma came and wh- how the successor is someone named Blackbeard. And this is where we see what exactly happened. Commander of the second division of the Whitebeard Pirates, Firefist Ace, is awaiting execution in, at Impel Down. So <laughs> Ace uh, did not win that fight. No, nope. <laughs> that we we did not see the conclusion of on screen. <laughs> I think we can gleam that. Yeah, and we brought back Impel Down, this thing that we were spent how long trying to prevent Robin going into, and yeah. Ace is there now. So yeah, that's that's not and, good. And that's kind of all we get on it for a while. But I mean, this this stuff is kind of. Again, one of my favorite aspects of One Piece, where you just kind of get a little bits and pieces of what's going on in the wider world. It's amazing that that happened 
at the end of the last arc and we're now getting like the the aftermath of it and seeing what what ace is up to now and yeah. it's it's not so good for now it's time to get back to the crew a day after moria's defeat everybody's slept through the day luffy's hungry and he has to suffice on giant blocks of cheese cheese i was gonna say that looks pretty filling but you know i guess it's it's no meat no it is definitely not meat and honestly i i feel for that uh that poor boy's insides <laughs> he yeah. that much cheese <laughs> i do love this bit though where like I mean, because, hey, they, they legitimately, they, they beat the bad guys. Nami's got all this treasure. She's like, all right, you know, <laughs> it's like Christmas come true. Um, and then, you know, she's basically points out to, to Lola. It's just like, none for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you, you don't get any of it. It's like, we don't want anything from our saviors. You guys can have it. And I, I mean, is that more gold than they got at Skypea? Because, my God. Hard to tell. But it is actually... I feel like they don't put a lot of emphasis on it, but like there are multiple arcs where, you know, the Straw Hats actually come out with treasure. <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> Actual like, pirates getting booty. <laughs> yeah, you don't think about it too often, but hey, they actually they actually got it. But I, I love this bit, though, where yeah. Lola accidentally says Namizo and is like, huh, why did I say Namizo? And Nami finally realizes like, wait, wait a second, is your name Lola? And she's like, Oh, I'm so happy to t uh, to meet you and so happy for it. And here, take this as a token of my gratitude and just shoves a bunch of treasure. In yeah, exactly. She, she went from none for you to like, oh, you know, you're the homie here. <laughs> <Take> yeah. <it. laughs> Hands, not mouth, <laughs> I should say. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I love how like Luffy and Usopp are screaming. It's like, oh, God, Nami actually gave treasure away. What's wrong with her? <laughs> yeah. Just kind of like, oh, it's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Storm's coming. N -n nothing good. And. All the meanwhile, Frankie's delivering some food because it's time to party. And we get to get an update on Zoro, who is well passed out, out and apparently a breath away from dying, according to Chopper. I <laughs> no I, kidding. Yeah, that that makes some sense. I got to say massive blood loss. <laughs> <laughs> And they're just like, huh, that's very odd. Luffy's up and running and the tyrant's gone and Zoro's down. So what the heck happened while we were all passed out? And that's when we find out that the Risky Brothers actually saw. Yeah, and I surprisingly love this bit from Sanji here. It sort of took me a second to realize what he was doing. Mm -hmm. um, or, or rather what that it meant because he he says you know they, they see the risky he sees the risky brothers you know like hey we'll, we'll tell you everything and he just grabs them and is like no come with me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they're like hey, hey he saved your life too so don't you want to like pump him up he's like this is this this is great stuff this is amazing and they explain like this is what kuma did and he stops them he's like no no don't zora didn't do this to make luffy feel grateful how would Luffy feel knowing that his suffering is what caused his friend so much pain? So we cannot yeah. do, let this out. So you just tell anybody and I'll kick the crap out of both of you. Look at Sanji protecting Zoro's pride. <laughs> yeah, Zoro's pride and <laughs> Luffy's feelings. Because you know exactly. Luffy would feel very, very upset about this. Yeah, and I love that this is like, wow, he's so cool. <laughs> All the Straw Hats <laughs> are so cool. Robin, using those assassination skills because spawned an ear on one of them. So she actually listened in and knows everything that yeah. happened. Yeah. <laughs> Which, again, it's a nice way to show how this girl just knows so much. Not only is she a exactly. researcher, but she yeah. just can listen in. <laughs> yeah. I love that uh, the, the brothers come back and, you know, it's like, are, are the, what happened? D don't ask us silly questions. Everything's fine. And then I just I just love that that knowing <laughs> smile from Robin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty great. And I, I got to say this. This does a lot for Sanji's character. Like, I know he needs to have a funny quirk, and that's the perversion aspect to it, but this is Sanji at his best. It really is, yeah. It's the... It, it really... I, I love seeing the crew in particular when they're... They they have, like, everybody's best interests at heart. Yeah. And yeah, Sanji and, is and, very good at that. He knows what's the best interest for most for the crew members at all times. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's why, you know why i love his rivalry with with zoro so much because it's hilarious uh but you know when it comes down to brass tacks like they they do care about each other they, they'll they'll just never say it to each other's faces in a weird way zoro is kind of the, the brains of the operation because he's usually the most sensible out of everyone and sanji will yeah. usually back him up like yeah i hate to admit it but he's right but sanji's almost the heart i was about to say the same thing yeah he he definitely looks out for the crew yeah 
it's fun that way. It is definitely fun. <laughs> Either way, it's party time. Everybody's eating, guys. All, all of Sanji's delicious food to take in, and Brooks eating. He's like, ah, my my taste buds will burst, but I don't have any taste buds. <laughs> it's just it's there's just... something after everything we've been through. We're, we're back to Brook just like rapid fire bone jokes, and it's not it's not as annoying this time. I think just because <laughs> after that everything endearment. we've been through, yeah, he's you, like. He's just happy to be here, man. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. He's happy to ha like he's surrounded by people having great time, having great food. Yeah. And I love how Frankie's even getting on the bone jokes. He's like, I ate so much today and yesterday. I think I put on some weight. You're nothing but bone. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, having, having Brooke and Frankie in this party scene, just like being their, being their whole selves. Like he's Frankie's up there shaking his butt on the table. Like, this is, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's pretty great. Nami and Chopper keeping an eye on Zoro while they're both eating, and Zoro, Luffy brings over Zoro's portion of the booze and is ready to just dump it on him to <laughs> yeah. drink up. Well, Nami's just like, do not give it to him. But I think it would probably work more than the medicine. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see that happening. So <laughs> I could see him waking up being like, Luffy's like, I missed this many rounds of drinks. I gotta catch up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> A piano comes out and Brooke is ready to play. And he's just, we learned that he's not just good with the violin. He can play just about every musical instrument. So he is just that talented. Yes. He actually heard what happened with Zoro as well. Yeah. It's a small little interaction with Saji, but it, it, it's cute. There's, and so it's <laughs> only four people, eh, technically six, if you count outside the, the, the straw hats, I guess, uh, well, we knew. you read the chapters. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, four of the Straw Hats know what actually happened with Zoro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get this like, oh, how about Binks's brew? And we get uh, Robin saying, oh, that sounds familiar. How nostalgic! And we finally have musical accompanying it to go along with all these wild party scenes, thanks to Brooke. Yes, uh, I will say. It's, since I feel like this section in particular, uh, this set of chapters, has a lot of emphasis on music, go, like, uh, Bing Says Brew is an actual song that, that they made for the anime. Um, so go go listen to that if you have a chance. I, I'd play it, but that is copyright <laughs> nightmare. Yeah, right there. probably. Like, there's no way that's going to work out. So, But this is when uh, Brooke tells him, uh, well, actually, not, Luffy's like, hey, you're going to become one of us, right? Now if you got your shadow back, you can sail with the sun shining on you. And Brooke is like, well, there's something I didn't tell you. I made a promise to a friend, Laboon. And he's like, yeah, it's Laboon. There's a cape. He's like, yeah, yeah, we, we, went, we went there. We know yeah, Laboon. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love the interaction in the scene because it's like you can kind of tell that like Brooke is still harboring doubts. And it, it's still like he feels almost like shy, reserved, like he's still keeping something. And, and like Luffy's just like, nah, dog. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like we know everything. Yeah, we met Laboon. <laughs> yeah, we were we, there. We got this. We know Laboon. He is still waiting for you. So we'd love to show you what, what he actually is like. And he's, you know, he's as big as a mountain and all that and actually throws off the song. Yeah, he starts playing too slowly. And Brooke just starts breaking down crying. And there's something yeah. so effective about seeing a skeleton crying like this. Right, yeah. It's <laughs> That's when we launch into the, the flashback where we see this poor young laboon, lost Miss Pod, following after the, uh, the pirate ship. We see... A live brook saying, hey, let's play him a tune. And so the, we're, we're part of the Rumbar Pirates. We'll bring a smile to any face. Let's show the little fellow how we roll. And they all yeah. start playing and, and music. And and uh, that, you know, he's, he refers to one uh, Captain Yorky, who we see on, on in panel hold, holding a drink. Uh, so Brook is not the, the captain of this crew. No, he's not. He is. He is just another member. And that's yeah, we start playing. We don't see his face. But that's that's how our, that's our setup. It's like ah, it's time to properly learn the backstory of Brooke. yeah. Here we go. Yeah, it's it's interesting to, to get uh, we get our flashback at the end of an arc this time. Yeah, it, it's interesting in that way because every I really don't think there's any time. I think I think the idea of just like yeah, he knows Laboon was just enough. Now to drive yeah. in the screws. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> to, we're, like, the like we're having Luffy ask him again. No, here is the reason. Like you, it's a, you need a flashback for a new crew member. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so time for the SBS, and uh, yeah, we we have one about like oh who changed their clothes is like the Nami's clothes into the wedding dress. I, I <laughs> pretty much that. 
And then why is Sanji who was it Zeph who drummed into Sanji not to, to be kind to women? And, you know, he Oda actually talks about about the Sanji versus Khalifa and how some cheered for Sanji and others criticized that he was pathetic. And he's like, I didn't want to write any dialogue for that sec- section because it's not San- that Sanji is essentially against women being kicked. It's just that he personally can't do it. He's not about women not getting harmed. It's just that he can't do it personally. Yeah, which I think is an important nuance that I'm glad that he took the time to uh, elaborate on here. Um, and that he did find it interesting that like that didn't work for everybody, it seems. He had kind of mixed feedback on Sanji's actions during that scene. Mm-hmm, for sure. Yeah, so. uh, but also he does he dodges the question a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he does. All we get is that yeah. Zeph was a gentleman too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonder what that's about. Yeah, it feels like that's... Mm, we don't have the whole story on that one. <laughs> That's for uh. sure. Well, into the chapter, into chapter 487, that song, as we have Iceberg giving I auditions for his new secretary. And I love the sheer variety, but the first one up is like, just honestly reminds me of a young Korea. Yeah, I could see it. <laughs> that design is just so young yeah. Korea. And it, Honestly, it makes me uncomfortable uh, this, because of that. There's something very funny about Iceberg. He's like his reaction because she's basically you know trying to hit on him, and he's just like, "Oh, <laughs> why is the one that looks like the the, the most confident is the the schoolgirl, <laughs> like the yeah. literal <laughs> elementary schooler?" Now I'm wondering, does he actually get a new secretary? And it, I don't know if ever. Um, I I feel like that's the kind of thing that would be on like a later cover story or something. I I can imagine that. Yeah. Also, I love but, Lulu uh, through the window, just doing something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I guess I think he's saying yes because he's like circles like, oh, yes, like, yes, yes, this one. Yes, yes. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. <laughs> that, that'd be my guess. My favorite detail of all, though, there is one of those the, the animals that they ride throughout. Oh, Water the, 7. The, the Yagara bull or whatever. Yeah, there is one in a suit in the background. Yeah, <laughs> that is so good. Who put that there? <laughs> Uh, but yes, into the chapter itself, and it's time to properly meet Human Brook. And it's amazing, one, how he's not a very good-looking guy, but also he he basically is just Brook, <laughs> except a yeah, skeleton, the not a skeleton. Yeah, pretty much. I feel like he, he even has, like, he has a scar on his forehead and kind of the same general area where, like, his skull is cracked. <laughs> yeah, that, that definitely yeah. stayed through. And he's uh, also he's 38. Oh, I was about to point out the same yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So this is 50 years ago. So even without the 50 year gap, I think he's still older than Frankie. I think so. I don't. I, Frankie is in his early 30s. I'm pretty sure. Yes, I'm pretty I don't, sure. Don't, don't, I th- obviously. Th- yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't matter too much. But uh, yeah, it's time to learn about Brooks time on the on the, the Rumbar Pirates, how he woke everybody up at re- really early with a song. And uh, we still have Laboon here and uh, hanging out uh, with them. And they're just like, he's too cute. How can we not love right, him? He's the, too cute. They can't, we can't get rid of him. You know, he's just going to keep following us. Yeah. And they're all just like, oh, he's so cute. <laughs> and it's, it's really just a rundown of like, uh, they're fighting other pirates. And uh, it's like, oh, no, two of our men went overboard. Oh, thank goodness Laboon was there. So hanging out with us. And we'll, we'll sing yeah, that song. Yeah, we're really seeing... Bits and pieces of all of their adventures together. It really, it feels like they've they're spending a long time together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how he the laboon saves the crew. They save him from a, a the sea monster that got into the West Blue. How laboon really likes Brooke uh, because of the music, and I love these intercuts of uh, th- through the the flashback of Brooke. Yeah, just time time jumps around a whole lot during this flashback, and getting sort of like it, it kind of. It cuts back to Brooke still playing uh, in the present and, you know, still tears rolling down his uh, face. <laughs> yeah, th- there's a melancholy to this that you don't quite get with the others because there's usually like this uplifting bit to a to Yeah, a and, I, and I feel like it's more like a lot of One Piece like character flashbacks are really bombastic in the way that they're sad. Mm-hmm. This is and, this yeah. is a slow burn. Exactly. Yeah, it really does feel... And I guess that's uh, an advantage you have when, you know, that's you have a character who's uh, basically 80, 83. Yeah. <laughs> or, oh, I'm sorry, 88. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll get into the true tragedy of Brooke 
uh, as, as we get through this. But yeah, we've reached a point where it's like we're about to go to the Grand Line. We can't protect them in the Grand Line. We can't let this keep happening. So, hey, Brooke, he really likes all of your music. You tell you you tell him, and we get a whole lassie scene of like, we can't take you. That's no place for kids. Go on, get out of here. And of course, Laboon is just crying over him, basically. Which that that happened in the um right when they got to the the Straw Hats got to the Grand Line too, right? Am I? I when they, they he wanted to come with I think, them. I don't think he wanted to come with them. No, uh, 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 the aspect of um Laboon like his crying is sort of dr- drowning out, like. I think it was Crocus trying to like tell him the truth or something. Oh, maybe. Something yeah, like I think so. Where he wouldn't listen to it. Yeah. And there, there's something about going uh, through reverse mountain that always happens during a giant rainstorm for, yeah. the, for what we see. <laughs> but they managed. Well, we know it might just be constantly raining. The, the Grand Line is like that. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But they make it over reverse mountain. They meet with Crocus, a young Crocus, which is interesting to see young Crocus. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they um, basically like, hey, uh, we need to fix up the ship. And you can see it. It's in rough shape. Yeah, I, I guess that's also the I mean, hey, that really emphasizes that, you know, going through reverse mountain. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah, I mean, I guess the Mary would have been messed up even more if it hadn't been for Luffy using his gum gum balloon to cushion it at one point. Yeah. So but they make it there. They're all set. They're going to make some repairs. And all of a sudden, here's Laboon. <laughs> He yep. followed him <laughs> over. <kinda> like, <laughs> it's like, is that your pet? Yeah, Crocus. And Crocus asks. <laughs> and yeah, they, they, well, it's like, well, he's here. Let's, let's sing and laugh and hang out together. And they spend three months bonding with Crocus. And it's like, okay, you really do need to stay here. We'll be back. Wait until yeah. the day you'll grow big and strong. Then you can go anywhere. And no matter where our adventures take us, you can come along. You're one of us. Well, just for two or three years. Yep. Two or three years, we'll return, and then you can come with us. Three years later, the Florian Triangle, and we just get... What a haunting sequence. Like, my yeah. God. This one, it, it really... The way that, like, you, you see one of the one of his crewmates, like, just to skeletons and just, like, he's you know stabbed through with swords it looks like and you know he flashes back to that character while he was alive you know it's like you know can you teach me how to use the sword too and the way that he's just on his ship and you know there's just piles and piles of skeletons and coffins yeah he has all these coffins stuffed with their corpses because he just you know he only has so many and it's all a wreck and like it, it is such a mood shift to go from like yay laboon to oh god yeah just just hard cut everybody's dead <laughs> It's him reflecting on their time. Like it's flashbacks within flashbacks of what Brooke was going through where Mm -hmm. they're trying to keep up with it and trying to figure it out. They're still singing that song and he's just remembering all their times together. It's so effective. This honestly, I can, I forgot a bit about this flashback, but I think it's so structurally different, but it's so effective in its own unique way. Yeah. Like I said, the, it's really unique in how it uses time and how we, we do kind of have flashbacks within flashbacks almost kind of interspersed within the present and, you know, kind of like trying to still tell the story of Brooke's voyage. Mm-hmm. There is a version of the story where we kind of saw it from beginning to end chronologically, but I think it is such a smart choice to just like, you know, once they leave Laboon, it's just like hard cut. You are in, you because at this point, the reader, we all know how this ends. Like, yeah, Brooke. All of these people, he loses them all and they're all going to die. So, you know, just seeing kind of like that little bit of almost like Brooke's daily life on the ship with, you know, <laughs> all of his memories and, corpses. Yeah. Yeah. And all of them and having to live, having to live through the memories while in flashback. It's just it's it's really fascinating. And I think this is the, probably the most emotionally effective way to tell the story. Yeah. And the other interesting thing here is that we learned that the captain, Yorkie, not only got a bounty on himself, but caught some sort of plague from a jungle, which I wonder if it's Little Garden. Yeah, maybe. In, in that way. Um, it's hard to say. And we don't know if he survives or not, but ultimately he has to cut his voyage sh- short. He and the rest of the infected crew members decide to stay behind and he makes Brooke captain. Yeah. Just another gut punch, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wonder 
we don't know what happens to Yorkie. We don't know if he survives the plague or not. But we did. We do have that moment from Crocus, who says we heard about them like running from the Grand Line or something like that. I forget whether it was them or just them in particular or them uh, just pirates in general. But I think he was like them in particular heard about them running from the Grand Line. And I wonder if that's the case here is like this is where that portion of the story comes from is because part of the crew had to be left behind and they left the Grand Line or I don't know. Maybe I do not know if this comes uh, back in any significant way. I would not be surprised if it does. Uh, I'm sure if it did or does, there's probably somebody screaming at me right now. I was like, oh, no, you idiot. <laughs> it was right there. <laughs> but I, gen- I genuinely don't remember um, if, if like Yorkie has some kind of like descendant or, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yorkie comes back or somehow because for whatever reason, I just don't expect him to like because if he had survived, he probably would have tried to make ba- make it back to Laboon. So I think yeah. he died from this plague. That's man, and and even then, you know, like, wh- how long does he have to live? And you know, would he have ever made it back? It just th- there's something about just the simple act of like Yorkie leaving his crew behind that just it, it makes this world feel so much more vast, right? Because you're just yeah. there's a character who just like you you don't know what happened to him. Yeah, with that we learn, of course, that song is Binks's brew, and he he sends off the captain, and they sail off while singing. Yeah, that's brew. Captain's favorite song. Yeah. yeah. And that's only the first chapter. <laughs> so. Yeah, I was going to say, oh boy. Yeah. Also, I mean, of course, we when we were first introduced to Brooke, he was um, singing. singing it. Uh, yeah. Which that <laughs> has a little bit more significance now. For sure. But yeah, let's get to chapter 488, Song of Life. And now we see what Paulie's up to, where he's now the vice president and he's <laughs> being run after by both debt collectors and... And fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's great. This is, a, this is a fun little scene. Yeah. I, I, I really like this. Also, I like the, the, the all the cigars down his vest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. We started with a chapter with 10 years after sailing, setting sail from Twin Cape. So seven years inside the Florian Triangle. Good and Lord. He's by himself and he's like, I tucked my pants. How, not, not how embarrassing and he's rolling around is how fun how fun even if I'm alone it's fun a 45 degree angle doing all these silly things and he's like I'm alone and he's just being utterly silly in his but it's also like yeah. seven years lost in the Florian Triangle with no way to navigate and utterly alone with the corpses of your friends the fact that he did not go insane is a miracle yeah. He's losing it a little bit. And as, as somebody who spends a lot of his time alone, <laughs> this, this hit a little bit different for me. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. This is that you're nobody's here. You're just you're just being silly. And then you you realize like, oh, there's, there's nobody here. <laughs> yeah. What, what really got me is sort of he sort of he dreams that his crew is back and he's like, wake up. We sighted an island, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, the, the thing of all oh, you dying was the dream. You guys are still. Oh, and yeah. Ah. <laughs> they're just like wondering how Captain Yorkie is. They're talking about how it's still going on where, hey, Brooke actually got himself a bounty at some point. Yeah. So it, it sounds like, you know, and, you know, they're, they're they're really trying to carry on Yorkie's will. Um, and so it, it sounds like before everything went down, they still had, you know, quite an active time uh, as pirates with with Brooke as the captain. Mm hmm. And that's when we go back to the present and they're like, hey, what's on wrong, bro? Keep playing. And he's like, <laughs> I love this. He just opens up a skull where that that scar was. <laughs> yeah, which just, just freaks out Usopp and Sanji. <laughs> like, he, he could do that. And yeah, it's it's a weird the way his his afro also up. opens up. It's just like, what the hell? <laughs> it's so funny. But yeah. he actually reaches oh, in. And brings out a tone dial that he found from a merchant ship. And they're like, oh, yeah, like the ones from Skypea. So, yeah, we're actually familiar with it. Well, if I ever see Laboon, I want him to listen to this because I've never parted with it. It has a certain song. The last song sung by my former crew. The song that shows that we joyous, live joyous, joyously until even to the end. And that's our message to Laboon. And he asked to play it. And... Yeah, this is like, oh, we know this song and we finally see not the battle itself, but whatever happened within the Florian Triangle that wiped them all out. And my God, there's just still so many 
like either dead or their weapons were poisoned. So all of them are just like, we're, we're about to die. Yeah. But we only have one regret, regret Laboon. And so, because they know the Brook ate the revive, revive fruit, he's like, can you tell, bring our message to Laboon? And they ended off with a song and I'll make sure that they record their dying song. And he promises to take it to him without fail. And what a sequence. Yeah, it, it it really it adds an extra layer to Brooke's resolve. Uh, like it's no, I need to see Laboon again. Not not just because he was a whale, you know, that, you know, we felt really sad about 50 years ago, but also like, no, it is the dying wish of my crew to, you know, to let him let Laboon know that like we made it, you know, like we still that the proof that they existed, you know, it's. It, it, in, a, in its own way, it, it feels very like true to the thematic core of One Piece, of stuff of just like the ways in which people are remembered. You have this juxtaposition of him being by himself singing it, and then the you know of the the present day of everybody just raucously partying to it, and then you get the like his crew raucously partying to it as they're dying. Yes, and he continues to play, and we get the full lyrics. And we're not going to read them all out here or anything like that, but this is Oda. These yeah. lyrics have meaning. <laughs> they do. If you know, you know. Um, I I laughed out loud at this uh, just because I, I was like, you know, let, let me read through these whole lyrics just to, you know, just to see. I'm not even sure if I should point it out, but I feel like if if you're caught up to the manga, there's there's a particular couple of uh, there are a couple of lines in here that are like, oh, this this song has meaning. This how do I want to put it? Binks Brew is a folk song. Yeah, uh, it is a it is a folk song that clearly has it has been it has been passed down from generation to generation, probably. And I think to a particular like kind of person, almost like what Binks Brew is as a song and what it means to the people who made it and to the people who, you know, passed it down. It means a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Needless to say. I mean, it's a it's a pirate song and it's it's, it's definitely a uh, it's like talk, not talking about looting or pillaging or anything like this. It's just a. A song of freedom. Exactly. Yeah. And I think I think that comes across as thematically poignant to the themes of, you know, to, to One Piece, even without knowing knowing what I know. You know, it is very much like this is a, this is a song of adventure. After all is said and done, we all end up as skeletons, endless, aimless, the story on the uproarious seas. And we even get the origin of his laugh, the yo-ho-ho. Yeah, that's which is yeah part of the lyric. Mm hmm. God, I love the panel. We see Human Brook singing, and in the exact same way, here's Skeleton Brook singing. Yeah, the, the paneling with the way that we're jumping all around in time. This chapter, like, there's some really fantastic sequences here, and and by fantastic, there, there's this bit where Brook is basically watching his crewmates die one by one. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, I got chills when we got when me too. Like when they started falling, and our jolly band is band is down to a quartet. A trio, a duet, a solo, and he's just crying more and more. Uh, yeah, that that might be just like one of the most chilling pages <laughs> in the entire series, without a doubt. Like, like we talk about impactful, like, and and tragic backstories. Brooks might be the most tragic because he died too. Yeah, he, he did not escape <laughs> he did. this. He just happened to have that revive, revive fruit. Yeah, and. I mean, God, they didn't even know if it was going to work. Like, you know, what, yeah. what the hell does this thing even do? Yeah, but, exactly. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, there's there's something about, like, watching. And, and I feel like that's something I really love about stories with immortal characters. I mean, you, the jury's out on how immortal Brooke actually is. But, you know, somebody who's lived a long life and, you know, has, has watched, you know, has lost, like, their loved ones and has, you know, seen that up close and has to live with that. And mm -hmm. I, I find stuff like that to just be it's really heartbreaking. <laughs> It's good storytelling. Oh, absolutely. And he seems more immortal now because, well, because he didn't get back to his uh, skeleton, his body until it was already a skeleton. So he doesn't need to eat. <laughs> he doesn't need anything. Right. So he's, That's true. He, so, he lucked into immortality, but, you know, he's a skeleton. So. Right. Yeah. I, I think I think we had raised that question that if it, if he wasn't stupid, would he have come back at his normal body? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll blame the Florian Triangle on that one. But yeah, fair enough. He got lost on the way back. <laughs> I do love the detail of like the, the one thing the Rumbar pirates always say is like the crew that can make even crying kids laugh. And what was Laboon? Yep. A crying kid. A kid. 
Yep, exactly. And that, man, oh, I'm getting a little teary eyed. <laughs> yeah. But like, I, I love the idea of we're seeing more pirate crews who really are more about adventure and fun. Because I do feel like we don't see a lot of pirate crews other than Luffy, like other than the Straw Hats. It feels like most of the other crews we see are, you know, they're usually villains or maybe more traditional pirates. But no, here's here's a pirate crew with a theme and they're just they're just about going around playing music and making kids happy. And like that's I think that's really wonderful. <laughs> and it really it, it just it, it shows that what it means to be a pirate can mean many, many different things in this world. Mm -hmm. And the great thing here is we have this resolve from Brooke at the end is like, I have my pride as a pirate. You're waiting for us to return it to you after circling the globe. And I intend to keep my promise and return from the right direction. Yeah. Which also wanted to point out, cause I don't think it's, I think it's sort of, it's not um, strictly laid out, but my interpretation of that is, Oh, the Rumbar pirates were going to, they were going to try to circumvent the whole world. They were, yes. they're trying to do what Luffy was doing. And so I think that also adds an element of, why Brooke should be on Luffy's crew to begin with, you know, because he, he has a dream too, that is also, you know, directly tied into Luffy's. Yep. And well, let's get to the next chapter, 489, eighth person. And our first <laughs> so if there two... was any doubt, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's something that was said from the very beginning and it's, 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 it's so wild to think that how quickly, like it felt like it took, like we got crewmates quickly on the East blue. And then we got chopper after a little bit. And then finally Robin after that. And then after a long time, we finally got Frankie and then bam, yeah. right after that, here's Brooke. Yeah. <laughs> but, when you, but when you think about it, I guess is that in each arc, we did get a new crewmate. If we count Robin as part of like, since she came at the end of Alabasta, so we could count her as beginning of Skypea. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's, there's at least one full arc with, with the crewmate. Yeah, we're we're up to eight. Eight crewmates. And Brooke, has, we finally got that musician that Luffy has wanted since, what, chapter <laughs> three or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Although, uh, yeah, funny enough, who, who remains to be seen, but you know, I think there's a line of dialogue, I think, in chapter one or two where, you know, he's just like, ah, I want a crew of ten men. You know, mm -hmm. and he's getting there. So we're we're inching up. He's getting there. It's it's wild to think about, but uh, yeah, the song ends and they're like, "Hey, encore!" And Brooke just explains that we sang our hearts out for the last great song, and for fifty years I sailed alone across the dark misty sea, listening to it so many times, and just God, that image of him looking in it and seeing the reflection of his crew. Yeah, I'm. I had honestly forgotten about that he had the dial at all. So I'm kind of, I'm really happy that he has like a symbol of his old crew within him. It adds so much pathos to him. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a memory of them. But from this day on, my heart is filled with new purpose so I can seal away this dial tone and back into his head it goes. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I know Laboon is still waiting for me and my shadow is returned in the stretch. Of the, it's all over. This song needs to get the Laboon. And there were so many days that it was I was ready to give up all hope. But after all this, I'm glad I lived. And he's he's finally like, I'm I'm so glad I'm here and can I join the crew? Sure yeah. thing. And God, that just that panel, the the, the two page spread of Luffy laying out like on the piano backwards. <laughs> it's just I don't know. There's something really like I don't know, it, it it's it's heartwarming. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it, it kind of shows a bond between the two of them and yeah, Luffy's crew of weirdos grows and God it's <laughs> it's so wonderful, but yeah, yeah we we have eight crewmates so nine crew members on on the ship oh man that's weird to think <laughs> about <laughs> that we've grown this this large yeah we've we've come such a long way but they celebrate and lift them high and it's like welcome to the team musician man. Uh, he may be all bone, but he sure knows how to play. Our so long sought yeah. after a musician. <laughs> he, he loves he loves doing the 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 like forward tilt thing. <laughs> Isn't that like a Michael Jackson thing? I don't even know the forward forty five <laughs> degrees. I, I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> uh, but it is sort of heartbreaking. It's just I w please wait for me just a bit longer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the way God, and then you, you turn the page and you just. 
you, you see a, another two page spread Laboon just w- crying out St- and still has Luffy's symbol on it. And yeah, it still has it. And really, <laughs> God, reminder of just how freaking big Laboon became. Yeah, because <laughs> he was a tiny little thing. Just God that you seem to be in high spirits. It's 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 one of those things where it is a sad backstory. But we got this tr- moment of hope that we can build. towards. Yeah. it's it's heartwarming. And, and I think. I want to say I remarked on this when we first learned about Laboon, but I really, I really love the way this feels like one of the biggest pulls so far in terms of like introduction to reintroduction. <laughs> oh, for sure. It feels like a, like a statement of commitment almost in, in terms of like what Oda is trying to do as a storyteller of like, I, I, I love adventure stories that bring things around, you know, that like, Nothing ever feels really wasted, you know. Mm-hmm. Again, I mean, we talked about like you know the oh oh we'll meet each other again, and then, you know the the story is done and dusted. Never talk about it again. But I, I you mean, know. it's it's one of the reasons I still I, I don't know if I prefer one of the over, other. Obviously, uh, Full Metal, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is the better story, but I really liked how the original Full Metal Alchemist took every single character that got introduced in that like in those early uh, episodes and brought them back by the end for some purpose. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really, and and that's, (laughs) uh, on one level, that's basically, like, the appeal of One Piece in a nutshell, is just, like, this is, this is one massive cohesive world where very little of it is, feels like it's wasted, Mm -hmm. or it's just something that we needed, you know, to do in the moment, but, you know, but also, um, as, as I'll, I'll remark on, I think, in the next chapter, there's also stuff that's just kind of, like, Oh, what was that about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, but it, it, and that just that lends it, it. It's the perfect balance of like the author never forgetting things, and also just like this is a wild, wacky world where anything could happen. And I don't, I don't have to explain everything, but I feel like when you're telling like a really when you're telling like any story, honestly, it's like a it is kind of like a promise between the author and the reader where it's like the the author you know is like these things have to have a payoff these things will come back you're investing your time into this and i want to make sure that you know you get that out of it and so i feel like that's part of one piece's lasting appeal is the way like oda's built up trust over you know years and years and years and years because it's like no this series has long-term payoffs like this where yeah even though this manga is massive we stay invested because we are constantly rewarded for paying attention and being warded for being fans yeah that is and that that's what this laboon story feels like to me i think it's the one that truly just pounds it in like the buggy cover page shows how important the cover pages are this shows how important every single element is yeah and uh with that we get our proper introduction to brook he's dead bones brook a wanted man nickname of the humming swordsman brook and a bounty of 33 million berries so yeah, we learned about his ca- being a captain. Is like I pledge my life to the cap- Captain Luffy of the Straw Hat Pirates, and I promise not to be a burden on your crew. And two days later, we have a wonderful little memorial to the Rumbar Pirates, designed by Usopp, built by Frankie, flowers picked yeah. by Chopper, and a wonderful memorial because yeah, there's no way he could store the, the bones of his friends on his on the ship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was also another element I had forgotten about. This is that they. they Man, now that now that Brooke is a part of the crew, the, 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 that they're able to give the the crew a proper send off is or Brooke's crew a proper send off. I think is really heartwarming, mm-hmm. uh, and I love this uh, that Brooke says on the next page that you know Thriller Bark originally came from our homeland in the West Blue. Perhaps they will rest in peace in the soil of our homeland. That's a that's a really good moment. I I also like we had the joke last time uh, when we got the thousand signing behind. Nobody knew what the masthead was, but no, Brooke knows knows immediately. It's all it's the lion mm. ship. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we even get this wonderful moment between Brooke and, and Zoro because the two didn't get the chance to interact during the party. Yeah. Zoro comes over, plants his sword, the one that was broken, and he's like, "It's a dead sword. Please let it rest here as well." And something about him seeing, like, Brooke seeing uh, Zoro, who is so convinced is that he, Luffy's the man who will become the king of the pirates. He's like, what's all about? Like, no, nothing. Just glad to join your crew. I, I don't know. It's just sort of a nice moment between the two of them. Yeah, I feel like you didn't really get to see them interact all that much. And so this, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's something really poignant about this, about Zoro leaving one of his swords, too. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that sword carried him for quite a ways, and he got a new one, but it's it, I like that there's still meaning behind it, and to leave it with this crew feels fitting. Uh, and, well, you'd think that'd be the end of the chapter, because we've already been through so much, but... <laughs> nope, we're still... We, gotta, we got some lore. We got to set up for that. what's coming next, because uh, Zoro's finally up, as we can see. He's already taken off his bandages, because they're hard to move around, so he's getting yeah. flat from the <laughs> chopper. And uh, they're giving the other pirates Brooks' ship because Frankie has repaired it. So there's Lola's crew all set up. And now they need time to set sail for Fishman Island, where Sanji's excited to fl- uh, flirt with the beautiful mermaids. And Brooke wants to sneak a peek of their uh, their panties, which they're like, hey, that's a stupid question. Be- that's, a stu- that's a stupid question because they don't wear panties. And, of course, that just gets their minds wild. <laughs> but- yeah. <laughs> and then here's this weird line <laughs> where they're just like, I bet they're more beautiful than the pirate Empress Hancock herself. Who the hell is that? Yeah, exactly. Who is that? Huh. What? <laughs> There's a pirate empress? Okay. The hell is that about? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, all this talk about Fishman Island, you know, you know, Usopp is like, how, how come you guys know so much about it? And it's like, oh, we passed we passed through it. And then like, wait, you guys came from the new world? <laughs> yeah, you went through the new world? You're like, no, no, we came from it. So they went from yeah. the new world to the Grand Line. And that's where you learn that, learn that Lola's mom is also a pirate. And he actually gives the Nami her mom's Viva card. Uh, and they're like, okay, what's what's a Viva card? What's all that about? Yeah, this is paper. And, oh, they only have these in the New World. So this isn't ordinary paper. You can wet it or burn it and nothing will happen. You, if you take a, your nail clipping into a certain shop, they'll mix it into a special sheet of paper. It's known as life paper. If you tear off a piece and give it to your uh, friends or family, it'll actually reattach itself. You can see it drawing itself there. So, yeah, it, it points towards where they're sort of going. So, yeah, they're drawn to each other. And now I know, I'll always know what direction my mama is in and how well she's doing. It's such a fascinating piece of world building. <laughs> yeah, like- it's so odd that, that like there's this this technology to know how each other is. Yeah. And yeah, you can if you're ever in a bind, you can use it to find my mama and you know tell her that I'm doing fine. And Luffy's like, wait a second, I've seen paper like that before. And like, oh yeah, it's the paper Ace gave it to me. So let's yeah, that's what way back in Alabasta. <laughs> yeah, way back in Alabasta. Speaking of things paying off, huh? Yeah, weird. It scorched and got smaller. And she, and Lola's like, yeah, this is life paper, but there's also something I didn't tell you. The life force is also reflected in the paper. So. That your your big brother, he's on the verge of being snuffed out. <laughs> what? <laughs> Which is our is Luffy's first indication that Ace is kind of in trouble. Something's wrong. Yeah, whatever whatever's going down in Impel Down, it's it ain't pretty. <laughs> no, no, for sure. Uh, we do have an SPS, and we get uh, somebody being like, "Hey, we need uh, a CD of Binks's Brew with lyrics by Ichiro Oda." And I love how this person's name is Fusion Ha. <laughs> so they're <laughs> trying to all fame. But yeah, we get interesting details about Binks's brew from Oda. He says, that sailor's anthem was already composed when Brooke debuted and sang it. it went, I went to Kohei Tanaka, a mainstay in the world of anime music, to compose a melody, explaining that I had this idea for a story and didn't want it to get bogged down with setting music to it later. I told him that the Thriller Bark arc will start in about a year, but it ended up coming four or five years later. <laughs> <laughs> which just shows how much the story's ballooned. Yes. And it took him about an hour, but my lyrics made it in time for chapter 488, Song of Life. Sounds a bit scary at first, but when the melody changes, it sounds pretty neat. And he thinks that uh, Tanaka did wonders with his request. So, of course, we'll be able to hear it in the anime as well. And like I said before, it's, it's a fantastic song. Especially, I had no idea really or i guess i didn't really remember that like the lyrics like once i saw the lyrics show up in the manga i was like oh oda wrote the lyrics and then i, <laughs> I was like wait a minute there's something in here isn't there oh my god there <laughs> if is. he wrote the lyrics of then course yes. <laughs> of course there is <laughs> oh my god all right well 489 is actually the official end of thriller bark how often is it that we get the end of an arc at the end of a podcast. I just right? love that. Yep. We get a tiny sneak peek because this still feels a little bit related to Thriller Bark of yeah. what's, what's coming next with 490 arriving again. And hey, Oimo and Kashi are finally ready to return to Elboff. Yeah. Good for them. Good for them. I, I like this for a lot of reasons. And, yeah. And that's all I'll say on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. But yeah, I uh, 
all waving goodbye to Lola's pirates. And I love how Bork is like, don't get annihilated. <laughs> yeah. It happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Don't like, don't like that. It's bad luck. And I love how Nami made such good friends with Lola. It's like, thanks for the Viva card. It's like, ah, if you see my mama, give her regards. By the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We didn't did, talk about this. Yeah. I did not talk about this. Uh, there's actually two things I didn't, we failed to talk about from the last chapter. We're going to, I'll squeeze it in here. First of all, more related to Brooke. Because I realized as I was editing the previous episode while we were reading the, these chapters, Brooke is a refutation of Moria himself. Moria went to the New World, got destroyed, and decided, no, I want nothing to do with crews. I don't want to reconnect with anybody. Zombies are better because I don't have to have connection. They can just be servants of me. Brooke went through the same thing, had a, got annihilated, died himself, and yet held on to the connections that he had with his old crew and is even willing to join a new crew. And I thought that was pretty good cohesion. Yeah, I feel like, obviously, One Piece is a story about the power of friendship, like, (laughs) straight up. But I think what people kind of miss about that and and maybe why people don't like kind of power friendship tropes i I think when they uh are kind of like used to excuse plot holes and and other things like oh we just we did it because we're best friends but i think what what particularly the kind of the dichotomy between brooke and moyer really shows is like it's not necessarily the, the like just the power of friendship but like it is holding on to your friendship and valuing valuing your relationships with other people is a good thing and you will be rewarded for it and yeah. not doing that is a bad thing, and you will not be reported for it. Yeah, uh, and and I think that that is kind of consistent throughout the the world and story of One Piece. It is like, and I I think that's why the Straw Hats are such a successful crew, and a lot of the most successful crews. It's not it's not about power. It's not about this or that. It's just like we're going on a fun adventure and we're hanging out with our friends, and you know we we value that more than anything. So because of that, you know, I feel like. Kind of in the same way, like we talked about Lola giving Nami her mom's Viva card only worked because, you know, <laughs> she was a nice person to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like things things like that will always come back around. Give her that treasure and just like had that connection. You saved me from a pervert. Thank you so much. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. And, it, it, and it, I think that's. It gives value to Absalom as well in that way. It's like, oh, Absalom had a point because we got this connection between Nami and Lola now. And yeah, exactly. And to speak on that aspect. That's the other thing I wanted to mention is like I had such a revelation when I was like, oh, my mama who's in the new world. And I had this light bulb moment. I don't know the character at all, but I heard about a certain character before Kaido started being talked about. I'm like, oh, holy crap. <laughs> that was all. That's all I'll say yeah. about that is just I realized I'm like, oh, holy crap. And then it's one of those things that I, I, I remembered the payoff, but not the setup. <laughs> and so I forgot. I was like, oh, yeah, this is here. Uh, well. Yeah, keep like many things in One Piece. Keep it tucked in the back of your head. It'll it makes it'll come me back in a weird way. So <laughs> curious when that character shows up because I had a from what I heard, it seemed to be a certain thoughts about it. But now I'm not so sure. So, hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it all in due time, my friend. All in due time. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, but ain't that the truth? <laughs> needless to say, this this will come back up. <laughs> yeah. Going into the chapter itself, obviously. We have, oh, yeah, like, we're still on the first page. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> everybody waving goodbye and uh, setting sail. And we get this odd sequence. So it's like, no one knows what happens in this sea of mysteries, the Florian Triangle. Each year, over 100 se- ships sail into the mist and never come out. The giant ship Thriller Bark first dropped anchors in these misty wire- waters 10 years ago. But mysteries abounded long before that. And all the while, they're wondering, like, hey, did you see something move in the mist just now? It's like, hmm, what's what's up with that? The thick mit- white mist was also abundant on that day, this day, cloaking those mysterious waters like a thin veil. And there's something, like, eyes. <laughs> sh- yeah, there's glowing the- eyes in <laughs> within the mist. Oh, I had, a, I had a field day with this. I have... No idea what this is, what this indicates, and they don't even t- really comment about it. It's just something for yeah, the Yeah, no, I was like, all right, move it on. Yeah, we're just like, we yeah. need to come up with a song about the gallant uh, t- uh, crew of the Straw Hat Pirates. Yeah, so just to make sure that I'm not crazy, right? Um, so I did some Googling. Uh, I-, I read a couple of discussion threads about this particular thing uh, about the glowing eyes and the Florian Triangle. Nobody has any idea what this is. <laughs> what the hell? Is it just meant to yeah. be... 
always a mystery just because you never know what's actually in the Florian Triangle. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that like folks have come to the conclusion. It just might be one of those things. It's just like there are parts of the One Piece world that just are not explained. And yeah. like that's fine. There, I think because there's so much that is tightly woven, there's weird like left field mysteries like this where you're just like, what the hell even is this? Um, that being said, there are theories, uh, 99% of which I cannot regale to you in this moment right now, I figured. <laughs> but uh, they are based on this has a like it could what this is could be based on a Japanese yokai called an umibozu, uh, which is basically just so a mo- basically like a formless monster you know, a giant blob in the middle of the ocean that attacks uh, sailors uh. or something. Uh, and there are other aspects from much, much, much later on that could also be tied to uh, the concept of Umibozu as yokai. And that's really all I think I can say on the matter for now is that it, it yeah. might have a connection to something from like 600 chapters from now, but it also it, might not. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's very common in ghost stories to be like, oh, it ended up being nothing and everybody walks away. And then all of a sudden, like the real ghost shows up for a moment and like, yeah, that's it. Or like for famously that Pokemon X and Y or that ghost girl shows up. No, you're not the one leaves. Nothing said about that. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I am a hundred percent okay if some mysteries are just mysteries and that this is just mm-hmm. like a thing what i thought about when i first read this was actually the ending of skypea oh, skypea yeah. ended on a it, it had that one little like totem thingy the, like there's some like rock pattern that we saw in the the flashback and then it that was like that was the last couple of panels of skypea and again, I think that's another thing. We just got no idea. Uh, and, and that I think that's part of the magic, right? Yeah, is is sure. the mystery. I would not be surprised either way if it if it is something or it could just be nothing, you know? And that's, mm-hmm. that's one we're, piece, baby. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we almost have 500 chapters under our belt. We have a lot of details to, to start remembering because you never know yes, where yes. I, 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 I feel sorry about teasing the whole Lola thing. And, oh yeah, keep that in the back of your mind. There's like, there's a billion things to keep track of right now. <laughs> There's yeah, only there going to be more and more. <laughs> oh, God. I, I love this manga to death. <laughs> it, it, in the present, though, the ship is heading towards the underwater paradise of Fishman Island. And Nami's asking Nufi, are you sure about not checking on Ace and uh, making a detour? It's like, no, no, it's OK. Don't worry. He'll be fine. Even if he's in a pinch, he wouldn't want me to worry. Ace hates to show any weakness. So if I go to help yep. him, he'll just scold me. So we're rivals. He's as his adventures will be fine. And, uh, yeah. you know, and Sanji's like, hey, it'll revert to its original size, size if he gets better. So, yeah. Yeah, he's just got a cold. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good. We're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Which is very Luffy to do. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, it was just, I, I can also understand that he's probably, like, shaking it off on, on some level. Because, you know, he's it's his brother. He is worried. But, you know, I he mean, has to accept that. His brother's stronger than him. Why should he worry? That's true, too. Yeah, he's got his own thing. I got my adventures, and he has his. <laughs> uh, but they do a, a, a proper cheers to welcome Brooke now that Zoro's awake, and we cut over to Mary Joa, the sacred land, where Sengoku is chewing out Kuma. Like, you let them escape. Yeah, Have a I good gave you clear orders to kill them. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is grave. And all the while, Garb's here. He's like, ah, that's my grandson for you. And he's like... I can't let them getting out. It's like, pff, don't worry about it. He's not the type to go blabbing up about the fact he beat Moria. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love this. Um, God, I, this scene is great, especially I feel like on the cusp of um, the the live action One Piece show, which which gave Garp a lot of characterization. Mm-hmm. It's just I, I, there's something I really love about like, w- on the one hand, Garp hates that his grandson's a pirate and, you know, beats the hell out of him. But he's also just like laughing it up like, ah, he did it. He's like, he's still my grandson. I'm grandson. I'm p- proud of him. And that, yeah, that's all yeah. we really get from it. But I like that. <laughs> I like that Garp's kind of just there. Yeah, exactly. He's just, he's having a good time. He's laughing it up. And, and it, the, it's a scene the sort like of this that makes me like, you know, I bet Garp could still work if you wanted to put him in Alabasta a bit <laughs> in the live action. I think we saw this a little bit during Inia's Lobby too, where, um, uh, like, I guess we're the sort of tenuous relationship between Garp and Sengoku, where Sengoku's just like, do your job, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And Garp's just like, ah, my grandson, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And all the while we get some uh, random adventures here where it starts raining candy somehow. A sea ra- raccoon t- attacks them. Really, Tanuki, let's be honest. Yeah. And then they see a round rainbow before run- riding over a, sneeze- a sea snake current. So mm-hmm. all the while, Brooks playing the music and they finally arrive and uh, they're all gazing at it. And then Brooke is like, ha, you guys had it easy. It took me 50 years. But yeah, they did it. They've reached they the reached. halfway point, the red line. Yeah. And then just, again, seeing it for the first time since like freaking chapter 100, basically. And yeah, somehow, hey, chapter 490, we are <laughs> halfway done. <laughs> I remember hitting this point. Ah. Being like, oh, my God, we're only halfway done. <laughs> yeah. Half. Oh, that that's adorable. I, know, well, I, right? I guess in, in, term, in terms of distance traveled, half. In terms of story content, definitely not. <laughs> oh my gosh! But uh, I do like that the the crew here kind of you know reminisces. You know, uh, Frankie's you know just like you know uh, last time I saw this, I was just a baby coming from the South Blue. You know, uh, Robin five years ago coming from the West Blue, and then I love Luffy just laying it straight out. You know, the next time we see this wall, I'll be king of the pirates. So yeah. that is just like that's it. You know we see we see we come across this one more time and that's it and i feel like when you lay it out like that it does sort of i, I don't know there's, there's something about that that really emphasizes kind of like the end game mm-hmm. it, it absolutely does so it's it's a big moment but we're also kind of stuck <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> We get these scenes where they're like, all right, we have to be careful because Mary Joa, the, the Navy headquarters, is really close by. And we get to see another function of the Thousand Sunny where you can actually put out an inflatable pool section that, yeah. that we can swim in. <laughs> we see Zoro doing his ridiculous weights of one ton. Yeah. Not only one ton, he's lifting them up with his feet and he he himself is upside down, you know, doing push-ups with his thumbs. Yeah. And he's, he's too weak. <laughs> yeah, I must get stronger. <laughs> oh, my God. Good Lord. I love how his workout room is just at the top at the mast. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Robin, Brooke, and Luffy are exploring while in the um, undersea shark sub, the, the Shark Submerge 3. And they've already gone beyond its 5,000 depth, uh, 5,000 meter max depth. And there's like, oh, it's making mm-hmm. funny sounds. Like, oh, it's because we've already gone beyond uh, that. <laughs> should they have put... Three of the devil fruit users <laughs> inside of that submarine. Well, you'd think Robin would keep them straight, but uh, apparently not. But the, all the while, they got attacked by this giant thing underneath. So they got to run back up, and nobody's really concerned <laughs> as they're running back up. They're, they're like, I don't yeah. think I want to go in this shark sub. Yeah. The thing that Nami is most concerned with is just like, it, it's just kind of the same thing uh, that's been happening before, where it's like the, the log pose is pointing down. It's like, how the hell do you get to Fishman Island? It's like, we really should have asked Lola when this ha- uh, like, to figure this out, but we didn't think yeah. about it. And uh, they they come back up from the depths, and the, the thing follows it. But of course, uh, Luffy's able to take out this sea rabbit no problem because it's <laughs> he's on land now, so it's no, no big yeah. deal. But I love this panel where Usopp and uh, Chopper look at us like, eh, didn't seem so big compared to ours. It was nothing. We're okay. Yeah. <laughs> like they're unfazed. <laughs> How far they've for, come. For first time. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. they, they've grown. Good on them. Yeah. <laughs> our, our our barometer is now, uh, it's not as big as ours. So whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty great. But punching it in the stomach like Luffy did actually made it cough up something. A fish? A person? No, it can't be. And <laughs> Sanji's immediately in love. Yes. It totally is. It lands right on top of him. Has sparkle, sparkle. And then we immediately get the freak out face. I crushed yes. a human. And good God, Cammy from all the way back at, and uh, Hachi's cover story has shown up. Yes. <laughs> if you needed further indication, we were just talking about, hey, you know, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing really goes wasted in One Piece. Uh, so, yeah, here's... Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's even better too because it, it it sort of breaks 
you're if like hey you might remember this character but also you know sanji is just like oh my god it's a mermaid and then like the first thing she does when she lands is just like make this just like disgusting freak out face <laughs> yeah and it's funny too because she can be really pretty as they show her during her introduction but she also easily freaks out and just has the weirdest freak out face as you said <laughs> yeah <laughs> I love this, 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 you know, she's like, oh, I have to repay you somehow. How about some octopus fritters or, you know, you know takoyaki? Um, and then, you know, Luffy's in, you know, it's like, ah, oh, 500 berries. And then the, the starfish that's with her also has a weird freak out face. It just slaps her in the face. You're selling them? And I made a mistake. She's just screaming. And that's how the chapter ends. <laughs> yeah. The, star, the fact that starfish talk too makes them all freak out. And just everybody has the same freak out face as her. <laughs> Even Brooke, who's just in the corner. <laughs> what a... What a way to end this arc. <laughs> yeah. Like it's technically the end of, it's, I mean, technically the beginning of the next arc, but really the end of Thriller Bark. And I, I got to say, we, we talked a bit about it last time about our full feelings on Thriller Bark, but on the whole, it is definitely a lot of fun. It is a, it is a arc of peaks and valleys where previous arcs are just all about the climb. This one definitely had some lows, but my God, when it hits, it hits, it hits. hard. It hits hard. Yeah. It's, I mean, th there's some stuff in here that's just like peak One Piece, you know, th there's mm -hmm. even ignoring the uncomfortable stuff. There's a lot of really great comedy in it. And again, lots of like nice, chewy lore to really think about. And Brooks's backstory is still fantastic. And I think th there's a lot about here, this where I, I feel like I constantly talk about like how Oda is growing as a storyteller and growing more confident and mm -hmm. I think he, the way that he's willing to play with your expectations and will, like able to play with sort of the structure and what you expect out of a One Piece arc is really smart. And not to say too much on it, and who knows how many of you are still actually keeping pace with us or have just rushed on ahead. But in case any of you still are, you talk about growing growth as a storyteller. We're about to see that with this. Next yeah. <laughs> no I joke. Think yeah. It's been a, it's been a while since I've read it. I'm a little hazy on it compared to my memories of Water Seven and Enos Lobby, but this might be even better. The next a hundred odd chapters are bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we're we're getting sort of little bits and pieces of like okay, here's Oda thinking kind of way way further ahead. Uh, you know, like the way that he's really kind of built out the world. I think. We're about to get the blowout. We're about to get like, oh, no, this world has so much more going on and so much more depth and so many moving pieces than you ever could have imagined. Mm -hmm. and, and that feels like underselling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not worried about hyping it up too much. It, it really is that good. <laughs> I am absolutely looking forward to it. But for now... I believe we've said all we've wanted to say about chapters 486 to 490 of One Piece. Thank you so much for listening, and you can find more of my ramblings and stream VODs over at BitNerd Games on YouTube, or BitNerd with an underscore at the end on Twitter. And Brandon, where can everyone find you at? I'm at Brandon, Bo at Brandon Bovia on Twitter, talking about uh, anime, manga, games, and my job, and uh, yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. Yeah, definitely check that out. And if you'd like to help us out more, you can support the podcast over at patreon.com slash Derek Bittner. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-B-I-T-N-E-R to listen to the next episode ad-free three days early. And make sure to return next time as we don't can start the next arc. Nope. It's time to take a trip back to the theater for movie number nine, episode of Chopper Plus. So until then, my friends, bye. Remember to take life one piece at a time. So, does the offer to join your crew still stand? Yeah, welcome aboard. What? Just like that?